Good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Evan Stevenson. I am the USDA Access and Accountability Organizer here at the National Young Farmers Coalition. Today, we will be continuing our two-part series of navigating the application 22007 conversation featuring flag. Um, this uh, series has been dedicated uh, for those who are excuse me, curious or in the process of doing their applications for the USDA 22007 uh, discrimination payments. We know that uh, the application can be a little bit daunting. And so we're working in collaboration with FLAG to do these lives so that you can have a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete the application. Um, and so I've introduced myself. I'm going to turn it over to Rachel from Young Farmers. Rachel, please introduce yourself. Oh, Rachel, as you're talking, we can't hear you. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Stewart. I'm the new 22007 um, intake um, outreach coordinator or outreach specialist. I'm excited to be here. All right, I'm going to turn the mic over to Lindsay from FLAG. Thank you, Ebony. Uh, well, hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Keen. I'm here along with my colleague, Stephen Carpenter. Uh, we're with the Farmers Legal Action Group, a nonprofit law firm. Um, for those of you that may have been watching last week, we started off trying to do a deeper dive into the application. And as Ebony said, it can be or feel complicated at times. So we are hoping that if we help to walk through it, it might um, answer some questions that folks have. So I think this week, and Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we got through step four out of the 10 steps in the application. So we are gonna pick up today with step five and our plan is to just go ahead and um, jump right in. So I will turn it over to Stephen to get us started. And then also, if you missed uh, steps one through four, please feel free to look at our live from last Tuesday. And we'll be also be posting the YouTube video of the live on our uh, National Young Farmers Coalition YouTube. And then also, don't forget, if you do have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us um, at ebony, E-B-O-N-E-E, -E -E, at youngfarmers.org or Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, at youngfarmers.org, and then we'll make sure uh, that you get the assistance that you need. All right, Stephen, you have the virtual mic. Take it away. Thanks, Ebony. Uh, Rachel, Lindsay, um, my name is Stephen Carpenter. As uh, Lindsay said, we're at Farmers Legal Action Group. Uh, we're a nonprofit law firm that works for farmers. And, um, we have before we start i'll just say we have some materials on our website that uh, could be helpful to you if you're trying to work your way through this application um, you can tell that it's not a super simple thing if it takes us uh, two live streams to get through the application um, but we really are hoping that people who did experience uh, discrimination by usda and their loan programs will feel like they can give this a shot um, because that's what it's intended to do. There's real money out there. So if you did experience discrimination, um, we really encourage you to think about this program and how it works and um, get some financial assistance headed your way. So uh, we won't review the, the whole um, webinar we did before or the, the live stream i'll just say oh yes and farmers legal action group if you want to look us up and look at our materials it's flag inc.org f-l-a-g-i-n-c.org and what you'll find there is sort of a short four-page discussion about this program and the way that it works and then a really long version which really goes into every detail that we could think of to try to make sure that that people could get their answer their questions answered and you'll see all sorts of uh, contact information on those materials feel free to uh, email Lindsay or me and also obviously 
uh, Young Farmers is a great source of information here. They're, uh, you guys are super active and um, Lindsay and I are both, uh, well, I'll speak for myself, <laughs> old enough to remember when there wasn't a Young Farmers Coalition and you, you went Young Farmers Organization and, and it's really made a difference to have uh, you guys organized. It's a part of agriculture and farming that's been um, overlooked for a long time. And so it's really a pleasure to, to work with you all. So this application, it's long. It, um, and one of the things that USDA did was divide it up into five steps. So last time we talked about some just general ideas about the way to think about the application, the sort of materials, um, you know, really emphasizing how important it is for someone to tell their own story about what really went down when they dealt with USDA. So today we're going to go through the last five steps. And Lindsay is going to share her screen. Um, and so she's going to put up uh, the application so you can kind of look at what, what's there while we talk about it. And we're going to flip flop and get you through the rest of the application and then wrap it up. So step five is about uh, showing that there was been discrimination, that you experienced discrimination when you dealt with FSA. So there's some really important questions to ask here and the application does ask them in detail. And the, the first question, the first logical question is, well, discrimination, what do you mean? I mean, who's, who's protected against discrimination? And actually the list is pretty, um, I would say good. It, it covers a lot of the ways that we know that discrimination happens both in the society as a whole and in as far as USDA uh, loan programs. So some of them are very familiar, race, color, national origin. That sort of discrimination has been illegal for a long time. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but it's always, you know, it's for a very long time been illegal. For this program, and, and actually for a lot of other ways legally, other things are also illegal. So they can't discriminate against you basis on your sexual orientation, your gender identity, your marital status, a disability, um, age, right? I mean, if USDA told you you were too young to farm, uh, that's very likely a form of discrimination because you, you could have got a very large loan if you were at least old enough to sign a contract and actually, if you walked in and you were say 14 or 15, and you said, well, I'm really interested in trying to farm. Is there any way I can get a loan to get started? They should have said to you, why, yes, there is. We call them youth loans. They are smaller than the other loans, but they are intended for people exactly in your position. So um, you can see here the list, they are gonna ask you to check off the basis. That's what a lawyers, <laughs> the way the lawyers call it, the basis of discrimination. And so it can be, for example, race. And you're gonna have to get pretty specific here. They're gonna ask you on this application, you can see here, well, basically what race uh, do you identify as? And you can say more than one. Um, and there's, a, there's an, another category. Similarly for color, national origin, uh, what we, national origin includes what a lot of us would think of as ethnicity. So if you're Hispanic or Latino, um, as a legal matter, if you believe that you, you experience discrimination because you're Hispanic, you're probably gonna wanna say, um, see here, national origin. You'll even see there's a box under national origin for Hispanic or Latino. That's just kind of the way, the, the quirky way that the law works in that. Um, when we look at this, we think it's it's a pretty inclusive list. You'll notice here sexual orientation, um, you know, some things that people didn't talk so much about not all that long ago are really now uh, very, you know, increasingly recognized as a way that people uh, experience discrimination and it is illegal, and in this program, if that's the way the discrimination affected you, 
you have a perfectly good right to apply here and explain what, how that went down. Um, so that's what people call the basis of discrimination. Um, so what you're gonna be then asked to do is explain how the discrimination took place. Um, you, oh, and I should add too, if you're native and you're, you have the choice, you can either say that the discrimination was based on race uh, as Native American, or you can also say it's based on national origin. You know, the, the thinking there is that if you're a member of a tribe, um, you know, that's a, a form of national origin discrimination and not as much based on race. Or you could say both. And if you do uh, have status as a member of a tribe, you're gonna need to provide some documentation here. And, and that, that the documentation is sort of explained. You, you essentially need to be a member of a tribe. So the rubber really hits the road when you're asked to explain the discrimination that occurred. And you're asked to include all the, what the application calls instances of discrimination. So if you went in one year, one spring, and they said, no, we, you know, you, you're not eligible, don't bother. Um, that was the wrong answer by USDA. That was against their own rules, and it's very possibly a form of discrimination. So that could be one instance of discrimination. If you went back the next year and got a similar sort of answer, or let's say this time they let you fill out an application, but then said, no, you know, we don't think that you have enough experience to farm. And you know, you did have enough experience that, and they deny you for that, that's a second instance. So when they say instances here, they're talking about different times that you experience discrimination. And so the way the application works is that you uh, are really asked to explain each one of those. And you have, I believe it's, um, is it up to 10, I think, possible uh, instances of discrimination that you can describe. And we really encourage you not to stick with just one. You know, go ahead and, and if there are if they're, uh, two, three, four times that something happened to you that you should go ahead and explain them. Um, and we would, we would add too, it's not just denying a loan, it's uh, if you got a loan, but the terms were unfair, or the way they dealt with you if you had a heart, if you had trouble paying the loan, how did they, how did they deal with you after that? Um, those can all be discrimination too. So you'll you'll see here on the screen, there's a big space there for you to describe what happened. And we really, really think that an important piece of the puzzle here is for you to describe that discrimination in detail. It's gonna be no fun to write this all down or to tell somebody that's helping you, but it's really important. If you just say, oh, I was discriminated against uh, because I'm black, um, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. that, may, you know, that makes sense and it can be true, but what's really important for this application is to go ahead and explain all the details that happen. And you have this big space here. If you have multiple instances of discrimination that you can write about. And so the thing is, to the extent you can, you want to go ahead and say, I went into an office in Jackson County and it was in the Blue Springs office. And it was, if you know the day, that's great. If you know it was the spring of 2017, that's better. If you say it was March of 2017, that's even better. So the more that you can remember, the more that you can say that fills in the, the gaps and the pieces of information that where you can just tell people, you know, tell whoever's reading this what really happened the better the whole story fits together, your story. So do you, do you remember uh, who it was that you talked to? Uh, who was there? Do you remember any names? Any, you know, names are helpful. And then start describing how they interacted with you. If they, if they ask you weird questions, um, write those down. 
if they said to you anything other than here's an application, we'll help you fill it out, that was wrong. You know, if they if they started saying, well, we don't know that you're eligible or we don't really know that you're going to be able to farm successfully. I don't think we want to give you a loan. Come back later. Come back next year. We don't have applications now. Come back later. Uh, we're not, you know, you have to get an appointment um, sometime in the future. We don't want to talk to you now. And then they, you know, it's hard to get an appointment and you never end up seeing them. All those are the sorts of things that can be discrimination. And so what you want to say is those details. And again, you know, nobody thinks this is going to be fun to fill out, but um, it's important to describe exactly what happened to you. Um, and so that's what those big spaces are for. You do have what they call a character limit um, in these spaces, but for so you could sort of run out of space if you're doing this electronically, which most people will be doing electronically. Um, there's a there's later on in the application there's a place where you can add any details that you didn't have room to to fit in or describe and this step five is likely to be a step where you really will have a lot that you want to write about um, you also may well and hopefully you will have some documents that you want to put in there so if they told you for example uh, that you didn't have enough experience farming, you are going to want to say that, describe all of your experience. And if you have some sort of documentation from that, let's say that you went to, a, you know, a, a, some sort of a field day or some classes with a local farm organization, or that you did um, 4-H, or you did FFA, or you grew up on a farm, or you worked on a farm, you know, all those sorts of things, you can sort of, you, what you want to do there is you want to show that the reasons that they gave when they didn't give you a loan were wrong, that USDA didn't follow its own rules when it denied you. So, you know, a really important piece here is to be able to say, I was eligible for a loan and they still didn't give it to me. You, and so you can see here, you know, what's your, if you have a document that shows your work experience, any sort of thing that you have that kind of explains what you knew and what you were able to do, um, even and, and then you still got denied, um, that's going to be helpful here. Um, you, the USDA application does it describe some of the documents that you may want to include. Um, you know, if, for example, you got a loan from them. But then they just once, once something, the first thing that went wrong, they immediately went ahead and took your equipment or they launched into a foreclosure operation or just really cracked down on you. That is probably also not following their own rules. And if you describe that, you, if you have any sort of documentation that showed that you got a loan from USDA, you want to include that as well. The documents really help fill in the gaps of your story. They help show that there is um, evidence of, you know, not just from you, that, that describes what happened to you. If you have a friend who knows what happened, they can also submit a document too. And, you, it, and so, it, you know, it needs to be not your family, but, um, but again, somebody who can say, yeah, I remember, you know, when, when Lindsay went in, and tried to get a loan, and they said that uh, they had made all the loans they were going to make to women this year. You know, and I remember her saying that. That's a really, really good piece of information to have in your in your application. That somebody else remembers what had happened to you. They can write out a statement under penalty of perjury. It can be super short, whatever, right? But it's just another piece of documentation that helps show the discrimination happened. Um, So we also, uh, and we have a longer uh, piece on this in our longer guide, is that we describe some of the most common forms of discrimination. And we mentioned them earlier, a little few of them, but I'm just going to say them really quickly again. 
So they wouldn't give you an application. They denied your loan. They gave you a loan, but they gave you less money than you asked for and that you should have had. They took more collateral. Collateral is the security for your loan. And so some people have been able to buy small farms or to get equipment, but USDA for collateral for the loan wanted a house and wanted way, way too much collateral. You know, that violates their own rules. I mean, that's a sort of thing um, that can be discrimination. So if you feel like something went haywire with this loan, there's a decent chance that it was against USDA's own rules. And that's something that you really wanna emphasize in your application. The other thing that you would really want to try to put in here is that um, you have good reason to believe that you were treated differently than other people. So um, if you're a Muslim and you believe that you were discriminated against on the basis of your religion, which is one of the ways, you know, the, the basis of discrimination, as you can see on this page again, um, one of the things, if you know it to be the case that they didn't treat non-Muslims in the same way, that's an important thing to put here because that really helps ice the case that there was discrimination because they treated you differently than they did other people. So that's something you really want to, ex to explain if you, have, you know, if you have that knowledge, if you know, if it was widely known in the community that you know, basically, you know, the, anybody who's not Muslim was having no problems, um, go ahead and say that. So that's a pretty, you know, boiled down um, what we want to try to do when we get to the step five in the application. So what you're trying to do, if we just sort of summarized it, is you're trying to show that USDA did not follow its own rules when it dealt with you, it treated you differently than it did other people. You don't have to have, you know, what, what the old crime shows would call a smoking gun, right? You don't have to have a letter from them that says, sorry, we're not gonna make you alone um, because you're Muslim. I mean, not to say it couldn't happen, but that's not the main way discrimination happens. But what you can do is put together you know, your story and show that you were denied something that you should have been given and it broke the rules. And that's probably enough actually to show discrimination. If you can just show that they didn't treat you fairly based on their own rules. And then if you can, if you can um, explain that they didn't treat you, uh, that they treated other people differently and better, that's something that you really, really want to put in there. Lindsay, I think that's uh, step five. I, you, if you have anything to add, please do, and then take it away to step six. Okay, thanks, Stephen. I think the only thing I would add on step five is just, um, so everything that Stephen just talked about, um, for this step, the application has a lot of prompts. So there are several pages that are gonna prompt you. So they kind of break down all the things Stephen just talked about into separate questions. And I'll just sort of scroll. Um, so just make sure that when you're going through step five, you do your best to read all of the prompts and, um, and answer them you know, where they're asked. And again, so I think there's about five pages in step five, you know, for every instance of discrimination, you're gonna to wanna to answer each of those prompted questions and just note um, the instance number at the top. So, okay, uh, moving on to step six. So this is a step that may not um, need to be filled out for everyone. And one of the things we talked about last week, so when we went over kind of the first four steps of the application was that, you know, there are many ways to be eligible for this program. And so, as you can imagine, it is true that if you have ever farmed or ranched and you were discriminated against by USDA, you could be eligible to apply. But it's also true that some people um, may have not yet started to farm and may have tried to get a loan and they were denied. And so they never actually farmed or ranched. And some of those folks are still eligible to apply for this program. But step six is really looking at getting information from those applicants who have operated a farmer ranch. And what this step is interested in 
specifically are economic losses. And so um, I'll kind of scroll through part of this, but again, this is only, you only need to fill this out if, if you are an applicant who has farmed or ranched. Um, and a lot of the questions here are going to relate to the types of losses you suffered. So one of the things that we have noticed is it appears that you know, the application is especially concerned if people have lost land because of discrimination. And so, um, as you can see right here uh, in number two of step six, you know, did you lose any agricultural land that you owned? So if you did own land and you lost it, you're going to need to describe the circumstances. So maybe you had a loan and they foreclosed on you and there was a sale and you lost your land that way. You know, this would be an area where you're going to want to put the details about what happened, when the loss occurred, how many acres you had owned, um, and, um, and any other details that seem relevant to that. Um, it's also possible, as Stephen just mentioned, you know, sometimes people get a loan and they take too much collateral. So maybe it wasn't a huge loan, but they took your house and maybe you ended up losing a home. So if that was something you lost because of the discrimination by USDA, you know, there are places in step six for you to note that. Um, and I would say for all of these, this is another, you know, documentation is important for every step, but um, this is another step where any documentation you have to support the economic loss you suffered will be very useful. So if you owned land and you lost that land, if you have any documentation of, say, a foreclosure sale or, you know, that would be helpful. Um, if your house was put up as collateral on a loan and you have the deed that shows a lien or any other loan documentation from USDA, that's only going to help you if you submit it with the application. Um, and then, you know, there's a couple other types of economic losses that this step will ask you about. And one of those is if you experienced an offset, a garnishment, or a deficiency judgment. So these uh, situations usually come about if, for example, someone uh, is late on a loan or defaults on a loan, and USDA might accelerate, meaning you know says you have to pay all of your loan at once. And if you can't, um, they could ultimately try to garnish wages, or for some farmers, they've taken part of social security checks or things like that, or even tax returns. So um, if you are someone who experienced any of that, step six is where you can describe those economic losses and, um, and how much of a loss you experienced. And then finally, I think there is a, yeah, there's a catch-all here. Um, part five of step six says, do you, did you have other economic loss not already listed because of the discrimination? So this is an area where if you have been able to quantify, you know, in money, uh, a loss because of that discrimination, and it wasn't about the loss of land or the loss of a home or a garnishment or something like that, you can describe it. And I think the important thing to know here is to really explain how you are calculating the loss. Because again, for better or worse, this step really seems interested in understanding the monetary value, the economic value of a loss. So if you had another type of loss, they're gonna wanna understand how you reached the amount um, of your loss, what that calculation looked like. And one way we know this is important is because over on the right-hand side where it describes the documentation for this step, you know, they say, if you are describing an other economic loss, you must provide the calculation. So this is one of those required aspects is you must provide, um, yeah, the equation, the calculation that you use to determine your loss, um, as well as any other supporting documents that um, go along with that calculation. And again, this one has, there's a lot of room to describe the loss. So uh, we encourage you to just be as detailed as you can. Um, and you know, an important thing about this step is all of these losses have to tie back to the discrimination. So it of course is important that you can you know, quantify it and estimate the value, but you also really have to be able to explain how that loss occurred because of something that USDA did, a discriminatory action that USDA did. And so there's a spot on the application for you to detail what happened. 
And I think, Stephen, am I missing anything or do you want to add anything for step six? I don't think so. I think that's got it. <laughs> okay, I will turn it over to you then. Yeah, the, the only thing I would say is you you, you don't have to, I, I, I do have a, one last thought. You don't have to measure this, these economic losses down to the penny. Nobody thinks that's going to be realistic. Um, but also if you say, yeah, they discriminated against me and I lost a million dollars, you know, maybe you did, right? But you need to explain how you got to that number, as Wendy, as Wendy was saying. And so do your best, be reasonable. Um, but, it, you know, it doesn't have to be to the penny, but you do need to kind of show your work of, of how you decided that your, your economic losses were of a certain amount. So we move now to step seven. And step seven is called prior claims, com complaints, and appeals. And uh, I think a fair number of people are going to look at this and go, what the heck is this? And the answer is this step is asking you about any time in the past that you did something which um, where you accused USDA of, of discrimination or tried to get USDA to change decisions, filed a lawsuit against USDA, for example, and kind of what happened when, when you did that. So for people that are uh, beginning farmers, most people are not gonna have done this. And so if you were never part of a lawsuit that accused USDA of discrimination, you know, never did any of these steps to sort of uh, get your own justice against USDA, the answer is just no, you know, you didn't do any of these. Um, in the possible, what, what if, if for people that are a little bit older, even though, you know, they may be beginning farmers now or again, what you'll sometimes hear about is people talk about uh, what are sometimes called the USDA discrimination cases. And so just so you, maybe we have somebody on who's a beginning farmer, but not so beginning. <laughs> Um, if you took part in any, any of these old lawsuits, older lawsuits, and I mean, you know, 20 years ago, um, where P, there were big class action lawsuits against USDA for discrimination, if you were took part in those, you need to describe what you did, that you, you know, which one, did you get any money from it? I mean, I think our you know, for our group today, this is not going to be all that many people, but if it affects you, you do need to answer these questions and, and go ahead and answer them the best that you, you can. Um, one question people ask is that if you did do appeals or discrimination complaints or lawsuits against the USDA, is it going to hurt you if you did it and you, you didn't have success? And the answer is no. Um, there are all sorts of reasons that you, you know, might have tried a discrimination complaint against the USDA, and they may have found no discrimination. There are all sorts of reasons why they could have said, oh, we don't see anything in that time, but in this time, you're going to have success because you're going to be able to uh, more easily show discrimination, in part because you may have more and better information, and in part because the standard of evidence that we talked about last time is low enough in this process that you'll be able to get over the bar. So let me put it a different way. <clears throat> you know, if you if you file a law for part of a lawsuit against the USDA, you have to really show a lot of proof of discrimination, preponderance of evidence, as it's called. <coughs> Excuse me. In this application, though, you only need to show substantial evidence, which is all you're going to have to do is show that a reasonable person could believe that there was discrimination. So what we're getting at is just because they asked this question, don't feel like if you if you did any of these other processes and you didn't have any luck with that, that you shouldn't bother here. Uh, quite the contrary. I mean, this is in many ways, this is really for people who couldn't get any sort of uh, remedy 
from the other processes, and but now they have another shot. And if you did do the other processes, let's say you're one of the people that got a payment in one of the lawsuits, uh, that actually really helps you prove discrimination here. Uh, USDA is saying they will sort of accept that as a finding of actual discrimination. You'll still have to prove that you're eligible for this program, but it's going to help your application not hurt it. They're probably going to, if they find, you know, they'll probably reduce your payment, your financial assistance a little bit. But uh, if you did participate in one of these lawsuits and you did succeed, that's actually good news, not bad. You should uh, fill this out as best you can and explain um, what happened. So in this audience, I'll say again, don't, don't think it's weird. If you don't know of anything about this before, your answers are just no, I didn't do any of this, and you move on. If it does uh, pertain to you, then you, you know, go ahead and fill it out best you can. Lindsay, step eight. Okay, thanks, Stephen. So step eight um, is really just a catch-all step where you can include any additional information that you know is not asked in the other 39 pages of the application. So this is not a required step. It's really just providing you with more space if you either need to expand on something and you know as uh, Stephen mentioned there are character limits. So if the online application kind of cut you off and you wanted to expand, you can do that here. Or if there's just something else and none of the questions prompted, you know, seemed related to what else you want to tell about what happened, go ahead and step eight is your place to uh, explain that more. Okay. Step. Oh, and I guess the one thing to note here, again, this is one of those applications where it's real important to read all the fine print. So um, I think to make sure it's, it's understood by who's reviewing the application, what your additional information relates to, be sure to just note at the top um, which step you're expanding on um, or which question or part of which step. So just make sure to note that. Okay, Stephen, step nine. So we're now to step nine, and that is called taxpayer information request. The good news about this program is that it's possible for people to get financial assistance if they experience discrimination. The bad news is that I, if you do get some financial assistance, the way everything stands right now, IRS thinks that's taxable income. So what this application does is ask you about your tax information. And so if you get one of these payments, you're gonna get what the IRS calls a form 1099, uh, the, the January of the year after the payment. So in other words, if the payments are this coming January, you wouldn't get your 1099 till the next January. Um, but so you're gonna to have to fill out some information here so they can know who you are and know what your tax information is. You, if you're disappointed to hear that this is going to be taxable, you're not alone. The grassroots farm organizations um, like um, Young Farmers has been working hard to try to fix this, try to, to do something either through USDA or the Treasury Department and maybe even Congress to try to either make this not taxable or to give people some support to help pay those taxes. But the bad news that we have to tell you is that uh, if you get one of these payments, you're, you're gonna, IRS is gonna know about it and it's gonna show up on your taxes as your lawyers, we advise you not to try to hide money from the IRS. It's, it rarely works, you know, they're not gonna forget about it, especially this. We're not talking about, you know, doing babysitting and getting a hundred dollars and not reporting on your taxes. We're talking about something that USDA will know about and um, they won't forget. So if you don't fill this out, you're not gonna get a payment. So just, you know, bite your lip and, and uh, fill it out and, and know that down the road, if you do get a payment, um, the other shoe to drop will be taxes. As it stands right now. 
All right, Lindsay. Okay, so the final step of the application. Uh, this is step 10, signatures and certifications. And so this step, just as it sounds, this is where, you know, you, the farmer, the person applying, you are going to need to initial and sign acknowledging that everything you've written in the application is true to the best of your knowledge. Um, there's also initials for you to, you know, allow uh, the Department of Agriculture to seek information potentially from other agencies uh, as long as it relates to the application. So they may be able to internally get other documentation or things that might relate to the application. So you're um, allowing them to do that and um, saying under oath, under penalty of perjury, that you know, everything that you've filled out is true and correct to the best of your knowledge. So that's the first uh, signature page. Um, and that anyone who's applying for this program will need to fill out this signature page. The very last page of the application is a signature page for someone who's helping an applicant. So, you know, this program, you don't need to go to a lawyer. You don't need to seek help to fill it out. But as you all who are watching this are aware, there are plenty of organizations out there like Young Farmers that are helping people navigate and fill out this application because we recognize that it's pretty complicated. And so if you are working with an organization or if you decide you want to work with a lawyer, and again, that's not required, or if there's someone else, um, a guardian perhaps, who's helping you fill out the application, if anyone is helping you fill it out, they will need to initial and sign this final page. And essentially, this is saying that the person who's helping to prepare it is, you know, that they are only putting in information that comes from the applicant, that they don't know any of the information to be false. Um, and again, the idea being they just want to know that everything in these applications is honest and truthful. So that is page 40 of the application. Um, and I think, what else should we say on that, Stephen? Do you have any final thoughts for folks? Sure. Um, I guess two things. One, we really want to emphasize that you don't have to do this alone. Um, young farmers and other organizations are really out there to help you to answer your questions. Um, this can seem like just an impossible thing to do, but it's really not, especially if you get some help. And the second thing that we, I think we really want to emphasize at the end is that you really need to tell your personal story of the discrimination that you experienced in this program to have some success. And it's true, especially in sort of three places, I think. One, when you describe your farming operation, you need to convince somebody that you really did farm or you didn't farm, but you could have if you got a loan. And so your education, your, you know, you know, you, you, it's not all every day that you're gonna be able to write something to say where the fact that you raised tomatoes matters. Here, it matters. The second thing that's really important for you to go ahead and just tell tell your story and get documents if you can to support it is the discrimination that took place. You know, what, what went down um, when you dealt with USDA? There's just no way around the fact that you need to, to spell it out. Um, the third thing is when they ask you to describe the economic harm or losses that you had that's another place where the as bad as the discrimination might have been if you don't explain how it actually hurt you you know I hate, you hate to say it right but in dollars and cents I could have made money on this or that or I had I could have had a good crop if I'd only had this loan we were all set to go um you need to really explain that and explain it if you can with documents, but really tell the details. Um, your effort here is to convince somebody who doesn't know you that the story that you have of your experience really holds together. 
And if you do that, I mean, our sense is that there's going to be a, you know, a lot of people are going to have success here. Uh, as I will say one last time, you don't need a smoking gun. If you can tell the story of your experience, have some documentation, really fill in the details, a lot of people are going to have success here. And um, you're not alone. You know, you got, you got uh, young farmers here and others. So take advantage of that really skilled, thoughtful uh, assistance. And with that, I believe we are ready to turn it back over. Um, final words, uh, Ebony, Leticia? Uh, no, I would just say thank you so much for joining us for part two of our uh, Navigating 22007 uh, conversation application. Um, I hope you guys found this useful. Don't forget, if you did miss parts one through four, please feel free to go back and watch the last Tuesdays live, or you'll be able to watch it later on our YouTube channel. Um, we did leave uh, information on FLAG's uh, brief guide to the Discrimination Financial Assistance Program, and then also the intake um, form for the Rural Coalition, or you can reach out to us um, guys, say your email address, Lindsay and Stephen. Stephen is, is going to be scarpenter at flaginc.org. So that goes S C A R P E N T E R at F L A G I N C dot org. My email is going to be L Keen, so L K U E H N at flaginc.org. And then you can reach us at Young Farmers at Ebony, E B O N E E at youngfarmers.org. And then my email is Rachel, R A C H A E L at youngfarmers.org. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time.